All set. Right, guys, I am just gonna screen, or I'm gonna share my screen and maybe we mute everybody, but like this is really interactive and use the chat box if you have questions or just pop on and ask a question. Just don't be afraid to me if you have a question. Yeah, I'm mute everybody. Do you want me to mute everyone, Michelle? Yes, please. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Now you're gonna mute. It's gonna end up muting Michelle. Okay, hold on, Michelle. It's, this is gonna mute all, so I'm gonna unmute you after I mute everyone. So hold on one second. There you go. Okay, now I gotta go and unmute Michelle. Let me do that. Unmute. There you go. All right. Hey, you're good. Okay. You can hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So today we or tonight we're gonna talk about sort of just do a summit recap. I just want to go over kind of our takeaways. I've asked some of the leaders on the team, on both teams who were at Summit to give me some of their takeaways as well. Um, so I want to really quickly, now my team, can you see these okay? Yeah, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, okay. Um, my team didn't get this. I didn't actually share this stuff with them, but because I really feel like you guys can figure, you can find this stuff on your own. As I've as you can see, I've shared all the FAQs with you. You know, of course, there's law, always lots of new launches and new products that are launched at Summit. So we have the Core de Force, the Yoga Retreat, which is on Beachbody On Demand. There's a Fix 8 cooking show and the Beachbody Health Bet that's going to go on. I want you guys to be proactive and go look up this stuff yourself. That's not what I want to talk to you about tonight because those aren't really takeaways. Those are just part of your business that you need to know. So um, I've given you all the FAQs, so maybe jot those down. You're going to want to know about these new products when they're launching and obviously Beachbody is going to keep us updated as they go along. They sound really exciting, and um, especially the cooking show. I think that's kind of cool. And the Beachbody Health, that's obviously really cool as well. But that you guys can um, read about on your own. <laughs> Tonight, I want, to I want to talk about what I really took away from Summit. And those are things that are going to help build your business and help you sort of build your confidence. Um, these are takeaways that I took from different coaches and different seminars that we took. And as, we, as I go into this call, I want you to sit and I want you to be really thinking about your goals. I want you to think about where you're going to be next July 2017. Are you going to be at Summit? Are you gonna make that happen? Where's your business gonna be? Where is your family going to be? Your life going to be? What are your goals? Dreams? Like, what are you dreaming about? What do you want to make happen? All of these takeaways that I'm going to share with you today are going to help you see that vision clearer. They're going to help you get there. But first, you have to make the decision. You have to set some goals. You can never achieve anything if you don't have something tangible to think about. So as we're going through this call, that's what I want you to do. If you have a piece of paper in front of you, write it down. Write down your goals, where you want to be by next summit, 2017. And I hope that one of those goals is to be at summit. Last year when I was at summit, I decided I was going to be a five-star coach. That was just what I was going to be. I also wanted to be an elite coach. So as you can see, sometimes things happen and sometimes they don't. It doesn't mean that I didn't work any harder or less. You know, I'm, I was a five-star premier coach. I'm not going to quit because I didn't get to that ultimate goal, but it gave me something to work towards all year. And that's what I want for you guys. So takeaway number one for me was mindset. Every single coach, every single person that spoke, Carl, Bonnie Engel, like everybody that spoke at, at Summit talked about mindset. You have to be in a positive mindset to be in this business. You have to believe in yourself. You have to believe in your business. You have to believe in Beachbody as a whole. If you don't, it's going to be really difficult to share this company and to share your story with people. 
personal development is key. You know, belief is the most inexpensive investment you can make in yourself. And if you're having trouble believing in yourself, it's time that you dug into some personal development. I know, and I can speak for myself, my first year I did no personal development. And I got along just fine. I got along just fine for that first year. But then things got a little bit tough, you know. Then I started comparing, you know, it's interesting, the higher you get in rank or whatever, then you start comparing yourself with other coaches and maybe that's already happening for you. And as soon as you start doing that, your business is going to be harder because you're going to waste so much time comparing yourself with other people. And for me, that is, I'm pretty frank and, and upfront about that with my team. That's one of my biggest biggest downfalls is I compare myself with other coaches. I have a jealous streak in me that I'm not really proud of. And I work every single day really, really hard to try and break through that. And personal development is what I need every single day to do that. It has changed my business. My second year, I would never have got where I was if I didn't implement personal development. You need to figure out what you need to work on. So like I just said, mine is comparing. Yours probably isn't. You probably have something totally different. Find the personal development that's going to help you. There's lists everywhere. There's lists in our file sections. If you're not sure what kind of personal development you should be reading, you can't think of something, you can't think of a podcast, reach out to me, reach out to Amy, and we'll find you something. If you're struggling in an area, you need to work on it. 10 minutes a day at minimum. Like seriously, some of these top coaches are doing personal development for four hours a day. And I know you're all sitting there thinking that's crazy, but you can do that easily in your car while you're cooking supper, while you're folding laundry. It's very easy to get personal development in. The busiest of people are doing personal development. Don't wait for the crisis to happen. And that's really what happened to me. And I don't want that to happen to you. My crisis happened. I started comparing with everyone and it held me back, you know, and then I had to work through these challenges within myself um, to try and get break through. Go for it before. Figure out what your weakness is and try and work through them before the challenges start happening. Happening. What you focus on expands and that's pretty self explanatory explanatory. You know, if you're focusing on the negative of this business, well, you're just going to have more negative. I, I, you know, if you're focusing on the, the shipping isn't right, or the, they didn't get my order right, or things are too expensive, or all that kind of stuff that you can't control, you know, it's just going to make your business hard to run. You're going to be, have negative energy, and you're not going to be able to have that positivity that's going to reflect off of you, which will then reflect onto your customers and your team. This was something that I heard at actually a seminar outside of Summit. Terry and I went to uh, a seminar the day before, and it was an interesting point. Your personal development should make you feel just a touch uncomfortable. And what I learned from, I think it was Shay Sanford that said this. So many people read personal development and they get to, get to um, a hard part and they're like, oh, you know, I got this. This is good. I, I don't even have to read this. I, I'm already good in this department and they close the book. They close, bef they close the book before they get to the part that's really speaking to them and really speaking to the part of them that they're having challenges with. Your personal development should make you feel a little bit uncomfortable because you should be learning and growing and learning how to make some changes within yourself so you can, you know, break through some of those challenges that you're having so you know don't put the book away before before you get to those uncomfortable parts um, how you feel is always going to trump what you know personal development breeds confidence and that's what you need in this business you need to be confident in yourself you need to believe in yourself you need to believe in this business I don't know if you have anything to add, Terry. You're to that. you're you're nailing it, Michelle. I think uh, <laughs> along with your yourself, you got to be confident in Beachbody, confident in uh, the process, not only of coaching, um, 
how your, your training goes down, how your challenge groups go down, um, how you rank in advance, and how Beachbody as the company runs things. You have to be confident in everything. If, you, if you're not, that, just l that little tink in your armor is just going to show. Don't you, don't you think? Absolutely. If, you, if you're not confident, if there's something you're not confident in, you need to go figure it out. You need to figure out how to become confident in that. If there's a part of the business that you don't feel confident in, you know, reach out to your upline and, and get it figured out. If it's something maybe you don't understand completely or whatever, you, you need to figure that out to have a successful business. Takeaway number two. It is time to get back to the basics. It is 100% time to get back to what we do. Our programs are the vehicle that we use to change lives. We are in the business of changing lives. We are in the business of fighting obesity. We are in the business of making people healthy again. We are not, you know, our... Our only thing is not to make money and build these big teams and try and recruit all these people. That is not what our core is. Our core and our belief in, of this company is within our challengers. It's within the challenge groups. It's where all this stuff is happening. And if that's all happening, all the rest is going to happen by default. Our job is to keep our challengers engaged, keep our challengers seeing success, keep our challengers hitting their goals. Our job is to empower them, empower them to join us, empower them to want to join our teams because they want to help us, you know, help us with this whole um, vision that our company has, the vision of ending the trend of obesity. That is our job. Our job is to inspire change, inspire change with everyone. The challengers are the key to your success. They are the reason we do this. You know, they're the reason that you started this. Think back to when your coach asked you to join her or him. How did you feel? That's how you want to make other people feel challenge groups will how they are the house of your tribe that is where your tribe is you know if you're doing this properly you're building a tribe in your challenge groups it's a breeding ground for your future team you do have to ask them though you do have to start you know coaching them on how they might like to join you you know people don't know just off the bat what this is about and they don't know how they could join us and help other people you have to help them through that it's time to start thinking about success points as people that's how we have to think of these people decide every month how many people you're going to help not how many points you're going to get set a goal how many people are you going to help lose 50 pounds this year Seriously, have you ever sat, sat and thought about that? How many people could I help lose 50 pounds? Someone that spoke, I think it was Ellie Upham, she decided that this year she was going to help 20. 20 people lose 50 pounds. That's incredible. And she has six down already, and the rest are on their way. That is what she does. She helps people you know, change their life. She also had a teammate that set a goal of 100 people. Yeah. And had, I think, 40 already there. So mm -hmm. <laughs> pretty mm -hmm. impressive. It's crazy. So instead of thinking of success club points, let's get back to thinking about the people that we're helping. That was what everybody talked about at Summit. And we really noticed a difference from Summit two years ago to this year. Two years ago, there was a lot of emphasis on building your team and recruiting and all this kind of stuff. And not that I thought that that was bad at the time, but I really noticed this year it was back to what we are as a core, that it's about the challengers. It's about um, empowering people. It's, it's about staying in phase one. So phase one, staying within those challenge groups. Totally. Anything else? No, <laughs> I, I totally agree. Like, but from a, a business standpoint, like last year, as you said, it seemed like it was all about rank and everything. That could have been our mindset going into it as well. Mm -hmm. But this year, like from a business standpoint, you, you still 
realize that your most successful challenger is your best business card, your, your best piece of advertising going forward. Nothing like a, a challenger that's lost 20 pounds after three rounds of 21 day fix and goes to work and a coworker notices and there's your next challenger, right? Your next coach. Or your next coach, yeah. But I'm thinking next challenger, but mm -hmm. either or. Yeah, so back to the basics. That was our takeaway number two. Takeaway number three, <laughs> hard work. There's just, this is hard work. You know what, this is not, if, if anyone is on this call and someone told you this was easy, I am so sorry, because it's not easy. It's not difficult work, but there's work every single day. You have to be consistent. Consistency is key. I have said this probably on every call that I've ever done. I have not missed a day. I have gone away, I've moved, I've done all the things that everyone else has done and I haven't missed a day. I haven't missed a day of my vital behaviors. That's all you need to do. You don't need to do anything more than that, but you have to do the vital behaviors. If you want to build this business and if you have big goals, you cannot miss it, bottom line. That's the hard work. You know, it, it's not difficult. It's actually pretty repetitive. Sometimes I do not want to message another person. I get another person talk to me about 21 day fix and I'm like, oh, I don't think I can do that today. But you do it. You just have to do it. If you're looking for balance, it's, it, it's just not there. there <laughs> you know, sometimes my challenge groups are so awesome. I wish I was a challenger in them. And then I turn around and I think, oh shit, I haven't talked to my kid all day. Like sometimes there's just not balance. Someone talked about, um, I forget who Morgan it was, um, talked about it's kind of like a pendulum swinging. Sometimes your team, you're putting tons of effort into your team, but your challenge groups suck. And then you think, oh crap, I got to get back over the challenge groups because I, they need my attention. And then sometimes it's your family and your husband and your friend, whatever. You're not ever going to be perfectly balanced. I'm, I'm still waiting for the pendulum to swing. <laughs> That's another story. <laughs> It's, it never swings. It's not coming back. <laughs> so, I mean, if you're looking for perfect balance, and I spent my first like year and a half, I used to say it all the time, oh, when I find balance, but it's just not going to happen. And be okay with that. Just, just be okay with it and just embrace it. Decide what you want and go for it. Like I talked about in the beginning, you, you've got to have some goals, you guys. You've got to have your goals set out. It's kind of like your why, but even a little bit more than that. It, it's about your goals for your business and for your life and your family. If you don't have that, it's hard to work towards anything. It's time we all started a program and finished a program. And I know that's hard to take, but really, it's our job. You know, it, it is, it is hard to start a program and finish it. You know, I'm in week one of country heat. You know, I'm not sure that I want to finish this program. I'm not going to lift a weight for 30 days, but it's good for my business. It's good for me to do it. It's, it, we have to do that. That's one thing that you have to do. Start and finish a program and be on your journey. I don't, it doesn't matter where you are. If you're just starting out and you're, you've got a hundred pounds to lose, you can still be the most awesome coach that this business has ever seen, but you have to be always going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And if you've hit your goal weight and you are like on any side of 10 pounds of that goal weight and you're a coach, you need to get back towards your goal weight. We are supposed to know how to do this. So if you're posting your journey on social media, be truthful, tell the truth, but always be working towards that. You know, something that I hear my challengers say a lot is, oh, tomorrow's another day. It's a new day. Tomorrow's a new day. Well, you know what? You got you to gotta kind of get cracking with these programs and you got to start them. You got to finish them and you got to do them. You have to be that person. Carl talked about that a lot. And I don't know who he was speaking to, but he really made it very clear that it was time we as a company got back into shape. 
you know, we've kind of fallen off doing our programs full out and sharing that with our followers. I, I think it was pretty clear who he's talking to. Cause <laughs> Harry thinks he was talking to him. <laughs> He's talking to me for sure. But he was also talking to the Millionaire Club. Holy mackerel. Oh, yeah. Seriously, for people that are supposed to have been doing this for six or seven years. For a long time. Yeah. You know, there, there was some that I don't think have exercised in six <laughs> or seven years. They and, you know, right? they well, exactly. They got comfortable. Yeah. And, and there's nothing wrong with being comfortable, but... We have to be, you're, we're proof the product works. We need to be that. And that, I put that in hard work because sometimes it is hard. You know, you're, you're distracted with building your business and I get it. I get it. But that's something that, that was a takeaway for me. You, you need to be, you really need to be proof the product worked. Don't get distracted with all the fluff. I know that you see all the pretty pictures and, and you see the, you know, these kind of, slideshow things and it's so easy i am the worst i would sit and do this kind of stuff all day if i could and never message anyone you know don't get distracted with all this stuff um a coach that i listen to she is number six or seven in canada no maybe in the whole company i can't remember in the whole company right now she doesn't have a team name she doesn't do all this fluffy stuff her and her husband own a whole um, restaurant chains and she works there full-time she's doing this business very part-time she said she does get jealous of all the fancy stuff other coaches do but she can't do it she doesn't have the time she does not get distracted with the fluff all she does is puts all her hard work and effort into the vital behaviors and it's got her to the top that's all you need to do you need to be consistent with those things this stuff that we do every day, and I'm going to say it once more, it's not hard. It's not difficult to do. You know, we get to talk about the best programs in the world that can help people change their life. That's, that's an easy job. That's, we, what we talk about is easy. What we can um, recommend to people is easy. It's just the fact that it's, you have to be consistent. And that's where we fall off the rails the consistency is so hard sometimes but you have to do it that's what's going to get you to your goals yeah <laughs> sorry but yes it, like especially with challenge groups okay, how do you expect a challenger to follow your lead or a coach in in waiting to follow your lead if you're not consistent with your posts consistent with your follow-up mm -hmm. all that in your challenge groups especially yeah um, because that's, that's uh, well, going back a step, but that's back to basics, right? Yep. yep. Takeaway number four, and this is the hardest for me. It was hard to write. <laughs> Have patience. You're always going to pass failure on your way to success. <laughs> the first few months of your business, they, like, suck ass. Like, they do. And I wish I could change it for every new coach that I run into they are hard and you feel like you're not getting anywhere and you feel like no one's ever going to join you or ever going to buy it. You know that you've talked to 25 people and no one has any interest and people are saying no. And it is hard. It, it, it does sting a little bit, but like we always say, if you keep doing everything every single day, it will happen. It can't not, you know, People have been down this road before. Thousands of coaches have been down this road before and it's worked. The roadmap is written for all of us. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. We just need to follow the same path. Put your own spin on it, but follow the same path and do it consistent, consistently every single day and it's gonna happen. You are going to see success, but you have to have patience. It does take sacrifices if you have big goals. Like I've said, you know, I have sacrificed a lot of things. I've sacrificed nights out with Terry. I've sacrificed lots of friendships. I, I have sacrificed. I made that choice. That was what I wanted to do. You don't have to do that, but this goes back to making that goal. Get your goal in your mind and then sort of reverse engineer and figure out what you have to do to get to that goal. And then, and then do it consistently. Take action. You know, 
so many people are gatherers of information, but then they don't do anything with it. They just kind of sit reading their information. You need to take action. Again, the steps are simple that you have to do every day. It's the vital behaviors. You need to message and connect with people. You need to share your journey on social media. You need to be proof the product work and you need to recognize your challengers and, and your teammates, um, your business partners. Those are the things you have to take action on and just put your, your own spin on it. Patience is a choice. <laughs> Trust me, every single day I have to talk myself down into being patient. Um, that things will happen as long as I just keep pushing. I'll give you a little story. Last month, I think it was June or July, I had the absolute hardest month of my whole business. Every single day, it took every ounce to keep messaging people because I, my team knows this. I showed them the pieces of paper, all the no's. And I mean, there was hundreds of no's. It was unbelievable. Nobody wanted to do anything with me that month. And every single day, I just had to make a choice. I just had to believe that if I kept doing this, it was going to work. And it did. It all turned out at the end of the month. No, it wasn't my best month, but it wasn't probably what my worst month will, month will be. But I had to make that choice. Trust that there's Trust the bigger picture that you know this is going to work as long as you keep going. And sometimes I just tell my team, you know, replace the struggles with gratitude and replace the struggles with fun. If you are just having so many, you know, so many no's and you're just feeling so down, go do something that you love about this business. I love making pretty pictures. So I stop with the messages and stop with the stuff that's frustrating me and go and do something fun. Go and take some fun pictures of yourself or take a video of yourself doing a, a, a pro, uh, exercises or whatever. Do something that you love and find the gratitude, find the joy in this business, whatever it is for you and, and replace all those struggles with that. Uh, I believe they were, the one thing that came up is they used to say, uh, wait a year, do the four vitals for a year and see where you're at. But now they've even gone longer term with that thought. It was, Oh, yeah. you didn't hear I that? Missed that. No, I think it was more or less, um, see where you are in five years or something like that mm -hmm. you know, forward even more mm -hmm. than just one year. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like I better go here. <laughs> we have a crying child. <laughs> okay. Takeaway number five. And for anyone that's been around for a little bit, I did a whole call on this basically be you like don't be weird just be you you know you don't this isn't <laughs> this isn't hard the person you need to be is you and there are going to be so many people that fall in love with you um don't be me don't be amy don't be bonnie angle just be you um show your vision you know be real don't don't copy other coaches you take ideas from other coaches. That's awesome. And I do that lots, but you need to be you. You have to make sure that if you're going to take ideas from other coaches, you can really spin them and make them sound like things are coming from you. If you're saying to yourself that this business is not working for you, one of two things are not happening. You're either not offering enough value or you're not helping people enough. And I don't believe anyone on this call is not helping people enough. But I do think that probably there's some of us that aren't offering enough value, as in they're not offering enough of ourselves. If you offer up so much about yourself, you're going to connect with the right people. You're going to connect with your tribe. You're going to connect with people that are going to become your best friends. They're going to become your business partners because they're going to fall in love with you and they're going to want to join you on this journey. Um, people always ask me, what, what am I supposed to post? I don't understand what I'm supposed to post. Like nothing crazy. Just share your day. We love a reality show. Everybody loves reality TV. Now that's all you're doing. You're just sharing, sharing your day. Try, try to make a list about yourself. What's normal about you? What kind of things have you overcome? What makes you special? And I'm going to share my, my list with you just so you kind of get an idea of what I mean. What's normal about me? 
I hate cooking. I hate laundry. My favorite colors are hot pink and gold. I love red wine. I love coffee. I love junk food. What kind of things have I overcome? I was divorced at an early age. Terry and I suffered infertility. We've adopted a little girl. My insecurities, I, I'm terrible with comparison and jealousy, as I've said. You know, I needed something more in my life when I entered my 40s and I found coaching. What makes me special or different? I'm scared of cats. I don't really like dogs. I love early mornings. And I love being an adult. Like, I love being able to make my own decisions. You know, I love to be the girl that didn't go out at night at Summit. <laughs> because I can. Because I like to sleep. <laughs> so those are the kind of things that I share on my social media. I share me. Make those lists about yourself and then gear your post towards those lists. And, and you're going to meet other people like you. Just um, share what attracted you to coaching. Talk about that. Try to think about the person that you were before you became a coach. Why did coaching intrigue you? Why did you want to join? And talk to those people. I try to talk to women that are sort of in 35, 45, who have probably been in their career or Maybe they've been home with their kids and they're looking for something different. They, they feel unfulfilled. They know that there's something else out there for them, but they're not quite sure what it is. That's who I want to talk to. Those are my tribe. That's, that's who I want. On. Be the raw you. Be relatable. Be positive. Sometimes if you're unsure about a post that you're going to click post on or whatever, Walk around and talk, talk it over in your head. Like, actually read it out loud. If it sounds great, then post it. If it doesn't sound great, then it's probably not great. Audit your social media. Are you talking about Beachbody too much? We do not need to sell Beachbody. Beachbody spends millions of dollars in advertising. Everyone knows what the 21 Day Fix is. Lots of people know what Shakeology is. We don't need to sell it. Everybody knows what it is. You need to sell yourself. There's so many of us. There's tons of coaches. People have so many options. You need to relate to each person somehow. They are kind of buying into you. They're buying your support. They're buying your friendship. That's what you need to, that's what you need to be thinking about when you're making your posts. You don't need to talk about the 21 day fix, one tip that Amy Silverman gave. When you're drinking your Shakeology, you know all those pictures we have, and I have thousands of them, so I'm not calling anyone out, but any of those kissing Shakeology things or Shakeology everywhere, turn it around. Have Shakeology facing you, the name facing you. So all they see is you drinking a health shake. Put it in your post. You know, I just had my superfood shake. You're going to have more people message you asking you what it is. If you have Shakeology sitting out here, they're like, oh gosh, there's that girl with her Shakeology again. They're, you're not creating any interest. It was a great tip that I took away from Amy Silverman. And I thought it was genius because then people are going to message you about it and it starts a conversation. You know, that's what we want. Everything you post, you want to start a conversation. If you're confused about what you should be sharing, you really just want to share you. Just be you, share your day, share what you love, share what you hate, all that stuff, but be positive. Try and always have a positive spin. And the last thing, I just thought I would share a few quotes with everybody um, that I kind of took away. I wrote down a whole bunch of quotes from people. Um, as they were as they were talking throughout summit we sell stories not products you know we that, that's what i'm talking about share your story share your challengers before and afters you don't need to share the 21 day fix you don't need autumn plastered all over your your um facebook page you need to shell, sh share real stories stop looking for balance because there is none i you know i went over that earlier don't beat yourself up because you've got so many things going on, just, you know, try your best and do what you can and stop looking for balance because it's not there. Focus on your challengers and then you have to ask them to join you. You know, make them have the best 
experience in your challenge groups. And then if you truthfully think that they would be an awesome business partner, that you think they would really fit into your culture, they will help people, they have the same vision, they love the products, then you have to ask them to join you. Before you ask, Google it. <laughs> Everything about this business can be found on Google or the FAQ. Honestly, guys, sometimes you need to be proactive and find your own answers because you're going to learn everything so much better if you find the answer yourself. Embrace the suck. Remember your why. Some days they're going to suck. It's just the way it is. I don't know who said this on stage, but it made me laugh because some days, many days, I have had to sit and just close my eyes and remember why I am doing this. There were lots of days that it would be a lot easier for me to just go back to my hair salon where I was comfortable, where I was making fine money. I had lots of customers, but I didn't love it. So some days I have to close my eyes and remember why I wanted this change. Not every day is fun. Not every day is awesome. Some days they suck and you just have to embrace that. Base your business on your why and not your daily feelings. Very similar to the above quote. You know, some days it's just not going to feel as awesome as others. And that's why you have to base your business on why you're doing this, not what happens day to day. Figure out your IQ level. What is your I quit level? Like, honestly, what will you do before you quit? What will you put up with before you quit? Figure that out because that's, I don't think anything would make me quit, especially after today. <laughs> I don't think anything would make me quit. Some days are going to be hard. Principles do not change in this business. How to be successful hasn't changed. It all boils down to helping people. That's all you have to do is help people and the rest will follow. The only difference between you and I and the top coaches is how much they work and how much time they've invested. The top coaches are investing an amazing, incredible amount of time into this business, and that's why they are where they are. Be true to you and be who you intended to be. Be you. Just share you. Don't be anyone else. Be you. Their opinion is not your reality. This, that one's totally for me. I, as I said, all through this call, my thing is about comparing and I need, you know, and worrying about what other people think. That's another sort of fault of mine. And we just can't dwell on that kind of stuff. I spent the first year worrying about friendships that had kind of gone away because of coaching and different things that had happened in my life because of coaching. And at the end of the day, I just had to ask myself, what's making you happy, Michelle? What's making you feel like a good person? And, and, and maybe paths have changed and that's just the way it is. What they think of you, they don't, they don't know. It doesn't matter. Own what you are good at and stop comparing. Be good at what you're good at. Don't worry about if the next person is good at something else, don't even try to do that. Just do what you do best and share that. And I guess the last question I have to ask everyone is who's going to be in uh, New Orleans next year in July? <laughs> I hope everybody. <laughs> and that is all I've got. And hopefully maybe some, some people that were at Summit might want to unmute themselves and share some of the stuff that they takeaways that maybe I missed or that you had that I didn't mention. Anybody? Anyone feeling brave? Nobody. The silence. All right, all right. I just have one quote here that stood out to me, and Gary V was a big part of Brian and I's thing. We, he is a huge fan of Gary V, and I, I like the guy too. Um, but one of the big quotes. I'm not as much. Not as much as him. He's obsessed with Gary Vee. Well, I'm not, I'm not obsessed. I just like him back. Yeah, he's good. He's cool. But he he had a great speech, and I loved listening to him. I could listen to him all day. Um, one of his quotes that I took away was the biggest reason you're not going to be successful is your lack of patience. And I know Michelle talked a lot about patience, but that quote just stood out to me because 
there's so many coaches that just start out and they feel like giving up because maybe they didn't make a sale. Maybe they didn't sign a coach in their first month. And I'm looking at them like, look, you're so brand new right now. You know, you cannot give up in your first month. There's going to be months where you sell nothing. In my first month, you know, what did I make? We just went back and looked at this yeah. the other day and it was so interesting to see. Amy had put up four or five zeros on her in her first month and the business. She didn't make a dollar until her like sixth week uh, in this business. And even then after that, it was like 30 bucks and 50 bucks. It was not, it was, it was nothing mm -hmm. super impressive. It's not like she ran out of the gates and, 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 you know, hit a home, hit a home run right away. She didn't sign up her first coach for a month and a half, two months mm -hmm. um, into the business. So, you know, these things do take time. There's some element of patience that needs to be there for sure. Oh, yeah. A lot of elements of patience for sure. Yeah. You, you gotta be paid. You have to be urgent too, though. At the same time, you have mm -hmm. to, you, we attack this business with an urgency pretty much every day. Mm -hmm. um, but we also know that, you know, there has to be patience there. Amy's not going to go 15 star diamond this week. You know, it's going to, it takes patience. There, there, we mm -hmm. have, we have long-term goals too. And everybody should have a long-term goal that they are patient with, but that they are working hard for every day. Because like Michelle said, like we don't take days off either. Like, like we take, we have days where we maybe don't hustle as much, Right. But I mean, um, our house is a disaster our, right now. We just moved. We've yeah. gone through some of that lately because of, because of life. But, but you know, we still answer our messages. We still, you know, do the, the, the basics to kind of keep things going. Mm -hmm. and that's because really once you lose thing. momentum, it is so hard to get back. Mm -hmm. That's the one For thing sure. with this business is like when you start taking time off, a week turns into a month, turns mm -hmm. into, I don't, you know, I don't know about this business anymore. I, I was too far gone. Right. And, mm -hmm. um, Yep. Uh, yeah. Great point. Yeah, you took a lot of notes. Well, no, I just want to share one thing because we're what are we like a week after summit, and I don't know who is it a week? Maybe two, maybe two, I don't weeks? Know, two I don't weeks. know. Something like that. But anyways, <laughs> like time. I wrote this down and I really like this. I don't know where this came from, but uh, one of the coaches, I think it was Megan Yuldson, said this, and she said, "You post summit, you really have to take action right away." Because inaction breeds fear and action breeds confidence. And that really just struck me like, yeah, of course we're confident. We do this every single day. We put in the work. Like you're confident like when you, when you do the work to be successful. You're not confident when maybe you're not doing the work that, that's going to that's gonna, uh, breed success. So that was one of my favorite things um, from Summit. I can't remember. Like I said, I think Megan said that. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, there's so many things, there's so many great takeaways from something Michelle hit on, on so many of them. Um, yeah. Melanie, uh, Melanie Mitro gave, um, gave a, um, uh, what was it like a talk? It wasn't like the keynote or whatever, but she came out and spoke for like a half hour mm -hmm. at general session. And one of the things that I wrote down from that was, you know, cause we get this question all the time, like, and I'm sure Michelle gets this too. How do you find so many, hard workers in your business, right? How, how many, how do you find so many coaches that seem to just, just take Good off? Business. And you know, the reality is it's just simple. Hard work attracts hard workers. So mm -hmm. you're never going to be able to attract those really strong coaches. If you're not a strong coach yourself, if you're not giving everything every single day, because those people really aren't interested mm -hmm. in signing up with someone who's really half in half out. And that's the thing. Don't be afraid when you're sharing on social media to say that it's hard work sometimes. You know, we don't danced around this forever, yeah, right? I didn't do like, this. Well. I, this is so refreshing to hear this, right? That, mm -hmm. you know what? Maybe your life isn't always going to be balanced. Guess what, guys? In the summertime, our life is a shit show, okay? We got kids home. We, have, we still feel the pressure of running this business, and we want to be decent parents on top of it. And <laughs> it is, right? It's a total... <laughs> Out of balance, it's not always the easiest thing in the world. We both stay up late to get to get what we have to get done. Mm -hmm. um, you, it's, not, it's not always. Excuse me, are you living with your in-laws though, Brian? <laughs> no, no, that's true. You guys won that. You guys won that one. Uh, no, most people. We got good this video tape and actually tape our day. <laughs> I can imagine that would be difficult. I mean, most people achieve success in any business and then they move out with their parents. You guys move back, <laughs> move back in. So it's a little unusual. We're trying to save on rent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
You're better off than us right now with that part. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You can have one of our houses. We, <laughs> we can't sell ours. So, but anyways, like if you're sharing on social media, like I did for the longest time, I shared the hobby stuff. If you're sharing that you're a hobby coach and that this is so much fun, and which is great, you want to share that you're having fun. But if you're not sharing that it takes hard work, you're only going to get the hobby coaches, and you're not going to get the hard workers if you're not show, showing them what it does take. You know? Yeah, and I know it's great. Like you guys see the beautiful slides, and you guys see <laughs> like coaches getting all these awards and accolades at Summit, and I'm sure they the files with this too. It's it's just like you're always just trying to hold it together, and it's not always easy. But you we just don't quit. We just don't ever say like this isn't this isn't going to work. Or man, Melanie's got something we don't have, or whoever's got something we we don't have. We just show up every day. We weren't like talented. We weren't like this. We weren't like <laughs> born into this. We didn't have the greatest mentor in the world. We just work every freaking day. That's what we do. And and anyone who's achieved any success in this business is no different. I'm a hot mess most days, but I get done what I gotta get done. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh, I think that's why it's so important to have a goal. And I, I probably sound like a broken record, but if you don't have something to work towards, you're not going to like, even if it's just, I want to take my kids on a vacation, like that's an awesome goal. Like it doesn't have to be, I want to not work ever again at my job that I'm at now. Like it doesn't have to be big like that. It can be small, but it's going to give you something to work towards if you don't have I'll tell you, I hit five star and that was my goal forever. That was what Amy was when I met her and I thought that's what I should be. Okay, that's what I'm going to be. And then I didn't have anything else and I hit a roadblock. Mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't even know what I was doing. Like, I'm like, well, what am I doing now? I, I have a new goal now and I feel finally back in the game. But it was really tough for like – that whole it was the weirdest month because it I'd hit this humongous goal I was so like proud of myself and then it was so anticlimactic because I was like shit like that was supposed to feel different now what because I didn't have anything to work towards so you really need to have something to work towards yeah whatever it is and everybody's different there's not a right or wrong there's no right or wrong it's whatever it is for you but then you'll you'll be able to figure out those steps to get to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like you said, it could be something fun, like earning the success club trip or going, you know, on those trips. That was our first thing. We couldn't afford a trip. And we're like, heck, we want to take our family to Disney or on a cruise. I mean, that was our Amy's first goal was monetary. It was, you know, it, but it was small, you know, it was like, I, she wanted to leave her, yeah. her, her, her nanny job. It wasn't really even re in regard to rank or right. any sort of, you know, mm -hmm. whatever, uh, accolade Fletcher or whatever. Thing. Yeah. So, it, and it, like, it has to evolve, like Michelle said. Like, it has to, we have all kinds of small goals. Like, we have a yearly goal every year. We, and we're in, you know, I mean, I am constant, like, sort of monitoring as to where we are and keeping track of, you know, do things need to get back on track or whatever. And mm -hmm. it helps. If you're an analytical person, if you like, like, sort of being on track and having sort of a structure to your life, because there's not structure in some ways in this business nobody's gonna some no amy's not gonna michelle's not gonna come tell you you know what to do every day so mm -hmm. it's hard to sometimes to stay mentally on track so that's what we do to, to mm -hmm. stay on track yeah exactly cool i know there's lots of you that were at summit so if you have any takeaways i can see you all Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Darlene. Hi, Sandra. <laughs> I'll call you out. That's okay. I was looking through my notes, but like, and Megan touched on this in the video and in, in our, our other group too. And I remember this, I forget what speaker said it, but stop hiding behind your phones, connect, check in and message these challengers. Do not abandon these people. Like they are coming to us and I think Megan had, and I've, I've had it before too, where people come to me and they said, Oh, I've signed up, but my coach has never gotten a hold of me. And that happens. Like, I don't know to who, but these people are counting on you. And I don't know, you guys can jump in on the coach that was talking about this, how she, you know, if there's the challenger isn't talking or posting, she tags them the next day. And then if there's no response, she voice messages them. 
And then in the next 24 hours, she goes one more message, but she leaves the open door of that she will be there regardless. And you all get it. You probably send out messages. You see it's red and it's like crickets. And it's like, well, I, I don't know. I would never not respond to somebody. Maybe it might be a day later. It could be two, but they are maybe just not ready for it now, but don't give up on them. Mm -hmm. So that was my, that was a big take too. Get back, to the, get back to the challengers. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, that was a great talk. I, that one will be a great tool when that comes out um, mm -hmm. in video. It was Ellie Upham, I think? Yeah, and uh, yeah. who was mm -hmm. her partner? I can't remember. And someone else. But. Oh, Chelsea Pearson was her partner. But yeah, leaving that open door policy, like your last message that you send out saying, I'm still here for you, even if you're not ready, just know I'm here in your corner. You know, and just leave it open. I like that. Great. Awesome, thanks for sharing that. Anybody else? Veronica, Jersey, see you all. Hi, Amy. <laughs> hey, um, a little takeaway I got that I've been passing on to my coaches was about the follow-ups. And somebody had mentioned um, follow-up once or twice and then let it be because you don't want to ruin that relationship when that person is actually ready to get in touch with you. You don't want them to feel really weird like, oh God, I took so long. She's, you know, I'm kind of embarrassed and then they're like pushed away. They don't want to talk to you. Um, <laughs> as opposed to following up like six or seven times, um, follow up twice and then go start commenting on things that they're posting so that they see that you're still involved in them and that maybe they'll see your name and say, oh, I got a message her back or I forgot she sent me an email or something. So I like that. It was pretty um, laid back and not as like forward. Um, so I've been telling a lot of my coaches to do that and I have a list of people I need to kind of stalk on there. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. I didn't hear that one. Well, that was in the same one, right? That was Allie Upham, I think, that said that. I think so. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. I definitely follow up way more, so maybe that's what I need to start doing. And I've kind of been telling people to follow up five, six times and then stop, but that's a great, great idea. I have a question, or I just want to know people's opinion. It's Brienne. Hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> um, I, I wasn't at Summit. I'm, I'm, I got my ticket for next year already. Yay. Um, so, but I have a, I saw that, that group, the personal development group that we started within the group and um, there was Bob, is it Bob? Bob. He like Bob, he like, yeah. Yeah. And what, the one thing that I have been trying lately or I tried recently and I actually did get some uh, customers and feedback from it um, was the tough love follow up. Um, basically saying like, you know, it's obviously like we've talked about it. It's obviously not the right time for you and that's okay. But just to let you know that I have a lot of other people who are interested. So I'm just going to be, you know, taking you off my list for now. Um, you know, and when it, it, the time is right, like they don't know what list that is, I, but it's, you know, my <laughs> spreadsheet list. Um, and, um, I don't really take them off, but I mean, I just make sure I don't pester them. And um, people, because what the me message was saying was that when people know that you need them or they feel that you need them, then they, it's almost like having the bad boyfriend, you know, the one that like you like put in all the effort and then he just like kind of like strings you along. <laughs> I mean, I've, I know that what that's like, but <laughs> so it's kind of like the same um, analogy, I guess. And I actually had about three or four people saying, "No way, don't leave me." I like I am interested, and I'm sorry it just didn't work out. And then I've just gotten to know them a little bit better, even from that point. And but I feel I felt weird because I'm not that person. I'm the I'm the one that will just okay. I'll keep following up with you and I don't know if anybody else has tried it or anybody else's take on it but Ooh, a similar one. yeah some call some I've heard other coaches call it like a pullback like where you kind of pull back from the relationship a little mm -hmm. bit because they're not responding or right. they said I'm in to one of your posts and then kind of fail, or you know you went through the whole relationship building process and they kind of when it came time to do it join the join the group they went silent right yeah 
Yeah. And, and I was having yeah. it happen probably there's, you know, the, the ones that have actually gone that far along, uh, there's probably been a good half dozen of them along the way. And yeah. I actually had a phone com phone conversation with one of them today, which was always scary, but it was good. Um, yeah. So yeah, that was just one thing that I've been trying lately. And the phone is where, I mean, Amy has, I watch Amy and my, and she, her goal is to get people on the phone. And when she gets them on the phone, you know, that's where the magic that's, happens. That's what, some of you guys <laughs> were on the phone with Amy and now you're on this call. So, so, I mean, that's really where, that's really where some of the magic is for sure, because they can really get a sense of you that they maybe can't get from your social media. Right. You can act all passionate in your text and your Facebook messages, but they can't really hear it and hear your story mm -hmm. the way you tell it, you know, unless they're on the phone person person with you. I think that that's huge. Yeah. And I would be the exact opposite. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Doesn't work for everybody. <laughs> yep. And some people do like there's some people just do better Different. with, you know, the, the messaging part, mm -hmm. you know and different things work for everyone i think there's too. definitely some days where amy wishes she didn't have to be oh, on the phone it's a lot for of so many calls in a mm -hmm. row and and that we could figure out the messaging or email because we know other coaches that do that michelle's one of them mm -hmm. yeah. hey one other thing i wanted to mention i know we're going long tonight but one of the best points i thought from summit came from gary v had so many awesome points but one of the things he said that i know we are guilty of and i'm sure a lot of coaches are guilty of is they put content out there and then there's comments on it or there's likes on it and they kind of just disappear, right? Like there's so much value in it. If you go on Gary V's actual like Facebook page, people will comment on his Facebook page and he's back in there like commenting back to them and replying, continuing that conversation. So when he said that, I was like, wow, that's like, that's hitting us right you know, that is really awesome advice. You know, don't disappear, you know, don't make great, you know, have these great content and have all these awesome, you know, responses to that content and then just let those conversations go. Those people are raising their hand and saying, I want I interact to, to interact with you. Don't blow it. We blow it sometimes. We, we definitely blow that. Mm -hmm. I mean, opportunity sometimes. So if you weren't at Summit, that was great advice. If you were at Summit, that was one of the, the, the big takeaways for me is just, you know, don't blow these opportunities. If you've got posts that are getting engagement, boost those posts for a couple of bucks, get them in front of more people and interact with those people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cause you know, that is a great way to use your, your budget for Facebook is mm -hmm. to ing is to boost your engaging content and then, and then use those contacts or, you know, get those people into a, move them into a free group where you can help them or, or whatever, however you do it. Yeah. Um, great advice. Good point. I think it was even one of his challenges. I think it was even one of his challenges was to, for the next year, yeah. if you do nothing else, um, comment on any person who's commented on your post. And he said, you'll see your business start to go. Yeah. Through. How easy is that? Like how easy is that? And, and you know what? We blow it. Like, we just do not, we don't do that as much as we should. And it's so easy. And I, you know what? And that's advice that I went on his page and I see him walking the walk on that advice too. He does the, I mean, maybe there's somebody that does it for him, but there are replies to his, his, uh, followers comments on, on his Facebook page hmm. as we speak. It's a great takeaway. That's yeah. awesome. That's something easy for like the newer coaches to do too as well. It's all of us, honestly, but the newer coaches that are like, I don't know how to engage with people and I don't know how to reach out to people. Just comment or like, you know, things that people are saying and react to what they're saying to you and engage. And maybe continue that, uh, you know, thank them for commenting on your posts. You can send them a private message. Uh -huh. You can continue this. It doesn't have to go right to like, you should join my challenge group or you should be a coach. Right. Just continue that, those relationships and it will end up there eventually. Yeah. Definitely. Or maybe it won't, but you know, a certain percent of the time it will. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, and another piece of that is the more that you're commenting, the more that that post is being fed to everybody else's newsfeed. So right. the more you keep that engagement going, you know, and then somebody else comments and then you reply back to them and then it keeps it in the top of everybody's stuff. It just right. keeps your face in the front. Makes that, it also makes that person's, um, 
it, it makes it makes it more likely that that person will see your content in the future. Mm -hmm. So yeah, good point. Like that's it's free. It's free. You know, getting your face out there and in front of those people for free. And it might not be a CTA. Like the other day, I posted about going to Trader Joe's or Whole Foods. I can't tell you the amount of comments I had on there. So I replied back to every single one. And it was like blowing up my newsfeed. Yeah. So then in a couple of days, I'll post a CTA and I'll know half of those people will probably see it. So mm -hmm. great point. It was in my, that, that post was in I my feed, too. you know, and it was, yeah, I mean, that's, those are, you know, so many of these things are going towards not free, you know, that they're going to be, you know, Facebook is going to be charging for the, for, to get into newsfeed. So easy ways to get in there, you know, easy ways to get, get more contacts and, and, and build your business without spending a fortune. Awesome. Another good takeaway was the live video. And I know that you guys have all been doing awesome with the live video since I put that challenge out there. But it's funny, after they started talking about live video at Summit, I watched the news feed. And I don't know if you guys watched them. I will. I try to stay away from the news feed. But just recently, I've been scrolling through it. And at the top of every part of my news feed is live videos, whether it's customers or coaches. That's all they're showing lately. Do you notice that? Yeah. It's all videos. And I love it. It's so, a lot of TRU coaches at the yeah. top of the newsfeed doing, yeah. doing these live videos and they weren't, maybe they weren't doing it before, you know, maybe that summit was this boost to give them, the, that's what I was telling Amy, like, I think it was great that you guys all start, some of you guys started doing this at summit because summit is like this interesting piece mm -hmm. of content that's new, it's different to, to start doing live videos with, but keep that momentum stop, because, you know, right? don't, don't lose that confidence because mm -hmm. it is easy. It doesn't have to be perfect. Amy sits here and, and we'll talk for two seconds about what, what would be good to talk about uh, for a, a live video. She goes live. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's great. Sometimes it goes, you know, <laughs> the kids get in it or something and it goes haywire. It doesn't matter. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it could be you prepping your meal or, you know, simple as that, you know, it doesn't have to be anything crazy difficult. Yeah. So, but just keep it up and you guys will see that you'll start to get a lot of engagement. So. Yeah, that's one thing they said in the Spanish one, La Cumbre Latina. They said um, that um, that you should do, definitely do a lot of live videos, and but then try to like do what what's you like. If you're real, you love cooking, then do a lot of like cooking videos. Like there's a coach, a Latina coach. Her name is Leticia Dominguez or Evie Morales. They do a lot of cooking. I guess it's a Latina thing. So they do a lot of cooking, but then there's another one that does like, she's not, she doesn't cook at all. She's not into cooking like, um, what's her name, Irene Estrada, but she does like, you know, she does like, they do like workouts and they do like three different, like let's say she's doing Insanity Max 30. So she'll grab like three moves from Insanity Max 30 and do like a live video and show the people that are following her three moves of what they can do and then but then they always say always in the live mention share with your friends um they always say like yeah like share um like because all of that action like will will grow your your audience mm -hmm. and um and then one thing that I, I wasn't sure about that one of the coaches mentioned is that every time you're inviting, whether it's to a, chal uh, to a challenge group, they say the first video you show them is the beach body challenge. The one that talks about not one program in particular, but like the whole like beach body opportunity that talks about coaching as well. So then people know that you can go in it, you know, you just want to be a challenger or are you interested in being a challenger and making money as well? Mm -hmm. Right away, you, she always sends that and then she go with however. I don't know if, if you think that, I mean, I've never thought about doing that, but do you guys do that or? I haven't sent the video. I don't. It's definitely yeah, a good you. idea, though. It, it, we, Jamie sends the I will send a message video. And, and I'll send a message that says, you know, there's this option. You can sign up as a challenger or you can sign up as a coach. You know, you can get this discount. You know, I send the message, but the video is a great, great idea for sure. Yeah, and because some people are more visual mm -hmm. than, like, I am very visual. I'm not all this writing 
long post like mm -hmm. i lose people when when um when i like too much time. a lot they're like whoa they don't even respond but i notice that when i when i send more videos you know like i'm more visual i can connect more mm -hmm. some some people may not connect with videos but some do so yeah. no that's a great point and I'm just going to add on your live video thing because it, your live videos don't necessarily have to be health and fitness. Michelle does amazing hair. And I had always thought in the back of my mind, Michelle should do a tutorial on how she does hair. And I was so happy. I didn't even mention it, but she ended up doing a hair tutorial live video on her like page. And the thing blew up. People were like, oh my God, I have this new way to do my hair. And I was like, genius, you know, like she did it. And so it doesn't have to be just be something related to you doesn't have to be about health and fitness. It's people love to do hair. People love fashion. It can be anything like that. So, And be prepared for someone to say, oh, that looks really ugly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You will always have the haters. <laughs> That's right. Oh, my God. I had all these, like, positive comments, and then this one lady's like, that looks disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there will always be that. We've had the haters. <laughs> Definitely. Have. Oh, my God. <laughs> But you've got great engagement and people loved it. So that's all that matters. Yeah. Screw the haters. Right? <laughs> I bet she went in and responded to every comment too. I bet. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that video was awesome. And yeah, I mean, that's, it doesn't have to be about Beachbody at all. Mm -hmm. That's right. Whatever, whatever you're into, you know, whatever, whatever. Be creative, make it yet. fun. That's right. All right, guys. Anyone else have any questions or tips or takeaways? Tanya, you were looking good next to Kit Hoover in that video. That was awesome. <laughs> and that does was, anybody else remember, like, does anybody you. remember Kit Hoover from uh, Road Rules? Road Rules. Road Rules season one. <laughs> yeah. No? Like, no? Nobody. Just no, you. Just me. Just you and Tanya. <laughs> Tanya, I can't believe it. After everything we went through, it was just you in there. I know. But I was like, like Jesse and I, oh. the three of us, we were, like, sweating. I had to put, like, a, a towel and put, like, water on top of the towel so I can cool my head because I thought my head was getting fried. And it's like, and then I just saw the video. I'm like, I'm not even. I'm not even in there. I'm like, this is the worst. <laughs> That's not the final cut. That's not the final cut. There's going to be a lot more on there. <laughs> we had a you like out of the way. Of <laughs> I missed the second part of the freaking general session. All that for, for yeah. nothing. It was crazy. You, you know what I think I left out is because the people that were all next to us were paid actors. And they said that consistency is key for them, like to have the same faces in the same spots when each speaker is talking. And somebody might have actually looked back to see that I was the one standing next to her in the yes. morning workout, and then I'm the one standing right behind him in the show. So I might have left out where I was placed, and getting up at 2.30 in the morning might have paid off. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, As you can see, Summit is a riot. So hopefully you guys all get to... Where are we going? Where are we going? Mind blank. New Orleans. <laughs> a quick yeah. question. The second part, the second general session, is it, was it recorded? Is it, has it been posted? Did they record the I don't know if any of them have recorded. been posted yet. Yeah. Last year, it took a while, a couple of weeks, a few weeks at least. Two months. I don't know oh, if they recorded the general session now. Oh, they don't. They don't record the sessions. The general sessions? I know they I record know. the um, the coach session, coach led sessions. The, work the workshops. The workshops, but I'm not sure if they do the general. Do you? Oh. I'm not the, sure. Um, the Gary V stuff is on YouTube. If you search um, Gary yeah. V Summit, and I think I saw Sean T Summit 2016. So I think his piece is on there somewhere. So I think if you just check in YouTube under whichever person you're looking for. Yeah, I think Carl Deichler spoke in the second part of the general session. I wanted to hear him too. Yeah, he did. And the one I put, the there's obviously two Gary V speeches. They're slightly different. And there's some, they're, they're, I was watching it and I was like, I can't believe I missed that. I can't, like, I was so, listening so intently. Oh, yeah. I'm going to find out it was the other one that I didn't go to. It was the silver session. So, yeah, so the, the one, the last one I posted, the better quality video is the silver. So that, like, a lot of us went to the blue. Mm -hmm. No, we went to silver. silver. Oh, the silver blue was the better photo. The blue was yeah. the blue. Oh, sorry, backwards. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got it. Okay, so.
Thanks again, Michelle and Terry, for yes, putting this thank together. Thank you, Michelle. You guys did Super a great awesome. Job. And we will see you guys later. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. <laughs>